Here's the solution to problem two of Yusuko Braun's December 2022. So this problem is called feeding the cows. The setup is shown here. So farmer John has n cows where n can be up to 10 to the fifth. Um, and each the breed of each cow is a Guernsey or a Holstein. And they are lined up uh, horizontally with cows occupying positions labeled one through n. So farmer John will plant some grass on these uh, on some of these positions from one to n and um, Guernseys will eat only Guernsey preferred grass and Holsteins will eat only Holstein preferred grass um, and he cannot plant both at the same location. However, each plant, each patch of grass can plant, uh, each patch of grass can feed uh, an unlimited number of cows of the appropriate breed. So the other point here is that each cow can move a maximum of K positions to reach a cat, to reach a patch. Um, which means that one patch can feed potentially a lot of cows. Uh, if you specifically, if you have a patch at position i, then it can feed all the cows from i minus k up to i plus k that have the same breed um, that matches this patch. And the problem asks to find the minimum number of patches uh, needed to feed all the cows and then print a configuration of patches that will satisfy, um, uh, that will use this minimum number of patches to feed the cows. And any configuration um, that satisfies these condi conditions will be considered correct. Um, the other thing to note here is that the input actually contains 10 test, up to 10 test cases. Um, so you will just need to run like the same program uh, 10 times to uh, solve this problem. So let's take a look at the sample input. So here we're given six test cases um, as follows. So in the first test case, uh, we have actually all these test cases are pretty much the same except the last one uh, in that the string of cows is the G H H G G. So when K is zero, our output is five because we need five patches of grass uh, and it's G H H G G because um, the cows uh, can, can only access the patch that they're currently on. So we must uh, clearly fill these um, with the cow's uh, own breed. And uh, the next example is with one. So in this case, we have um, a solution with three patches, which is dot g h dot g. And these dots here mean that there's no grass planted. Um, and we can see why this works if you just line up these, the input with the solution. So as you can see, this cow here can go to this patch. This cow can go to this patch. This cow can go to this patch. This G can go to this G and this G can go to this G. And then we're, we're perfectly fine. Um, we can do even better with K equals two. So here you can see that all the ships have size of most one, but with K equals two, um, we're allowed to be a little better and we can move at most two away, which means that this G in the middle can actually cover everything. It covers all five of these squares and this H can cover these two H's here. Um, so yeah, there's also other solutions um, that you can see here, which work for k equals three and k equals four. Um, in those cases, there are like a lot of different solutions that will work um, as well. So um, how do we go about thinking about this? So first of all, if we look at the size constraints of this problem, n is at most 10 to the fifth, which means our solution will probably be O of n um, or O of n log n, or something of that sort. Um, also note that we have like this time here too, so it, it probably will be end up. It probably will end up being like O of t t, t times n. Um, and uh, the next thing to note is that, like, what this means is that our solution is probably some like linear um, scan 
uh, that can like solve the problem very quickly. So how can we think about solving this problem in a single sweep? Um, so this might give you the idea of using a greedy algorithm. So what do I mean by using a greedy algorithm here? Let's say that we're like running across our input um, in the case that k equals one, for example. Actually, let's take k equals two. Let's say we were presented with this input in k equals two. Then we're sweeping across this uh, array and we start at g. What's the furthest place that we can put the food and this cow is still able to eat it? Um, well, that would that would happen to be the spot, right? So we would put this g here because that is like two units away from this g. Um, and note that this is actually a pretty good strategy to always put food the farthest away that you can. The reason why is because anything, um, if we put this like somewhere here, then it would only be able to cover up to this position. And it would potentially be able to cover a cow before this, but this is like not that important because in our linear scan, we've already seen any previous cows. So at each step, we want to choose the farthest position so that we can um, provide grass to um, as many cows as we can. And to do that, uh, yeah, we place it at the farthest position. So what that means is that if this is position i, then we place um, we place food at i plus k. So here is the sketch. Um, and this is not completely finished, too. We will, uh, so our sketch is here. Um, we'll, we'll have something like 4i from 0 to n minus 1. We will place, if we see an h, place h at i plus k. Uh, but we should also only do this if cow h is not already fed. So this means if if there's like a cow that's an H that's not already fed, then um, then we need to create food for it, and we should create food at the farthest possible location. Um, and th it's the same idea for G. So the nice thing with this solution is that we know that there will be no um, overlaps between h and g. Um, because if there's a g here, then a g will be placed at i plus k. Um, but a g can't be, like an, we couldn't have an h placed at i plus k unless there was an h at position i. So that's the nice thing about the solution. However, there is like one more point here, which is that like, let's say we get to the end of our input. And then we are suddenly asked to place, here's i. We're suddenly asked to place a g at i plus k. But what if this is outside the bounds? So to deal with this, we will just place this at um, the uh, last element. So if out of bounds. Just place it at the last position which is n minus 1. And that works because there's no more cows after the last one, at the, after this last g that we will actually have to worry about. Um, and there's also another catch to that, which is, well, now it's possible for there to be overlap between g's and h's um, in our patches of grass. So uh, we also need to have a, another caveat here, which is, if the last element, uh, I guess if element n minus 1 has a patch, place instead at n minus 2.
And this is actually guaranteed to work because um, you only encounter this sort of issue when K is um, like at least one. Uh, and if you, if you think for a little, you can see why um, it is like impossible for there to be a conflict, uh, a conflict with um, a different patch of grass at n minus two, as well as one with n minus one. Okay, so now let's go on to programming the solution. Um, so this will be a little more work than problem one, but still I think fairly doable. So we start by including bits. And then we need to keep track of our variables. So here they will be int n, t, n, and k. Um, and I'm also going to keep track of a few variables here for last g and last h. And this will allow us to tell like where was the last um, position that we placed food at um, in order to see if cows uh, that we're iterating over have already been fed. So here's our function main. Um, first we read t. Uh, and in, in general, to like iterate through a bunch of test cases when you don't care about the index of the test case, you can do while t minus minus. Uh, the reason this works is that as long as t is positive, t minus t will evaluate to true. Um, and then we decrement t on each iteration. And once t reaches zero, it'll be false. Um, and this while loop will exit. So this is just some trick to save code. Um, and then we can read n and k. Um, to read our input, I will just read it as a string. I think it's the simplest. Um, and we will also create an output string uh, of size n, which is initialized to uh, dots. So initially, um, last g and last h can be set to uh, negative k minus 1. The reason we do this is to initially Out to uh, be out of bounds from any cow, so it's unreachable, um, which means that no cow will appear to be uh, within reach of a patch of grass. Um, and then we start our actual solution. So we will have our counter here, which will keep track of how much food we've added. And now we have our for loop. So for zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, iterating over all the cows. Um, now we have. If we have a g and i minus last g um, is greater than k, which means that this cow is not within reach of food, then we have last g. Um, we want last g to equal i plus k. Um, but keep in mind that we have to bound this by the size uh, of n, n minus 1, which is the last position. So we will actually end up doing this. And then, and then now we need to check if this new position is occupied. So if uh, if in the output um, this is not equal to an empty, um, then we decrement last g. Um, so we'll make it from we'll move it from n minus one to n minus two. Uh, and finally, we set last g to g, and we increment our path. So this will set the patch in our output string uh, and then add a count to the uh, number of patches we've added. And then we do the same for h. So we can do else if si equals h um, and i minus h greater than k, which is put parentheses. And then we do the same thing here. So last h uh, equals min of i plus k and minus 1. Uh, and if flat t of last h is not equal to a dot, then last h gets changed to minus 2. 
Um, and finally, t of last h um, will be set to h, and we increment our count. And finally, we print the answer. So that is just printing count. Uh, and then printing t. And that's our entire solution. Um, and just an overview of the time complexity here, we're just doing a linear sweep. So this is O of n. Uh, and when we account for all the test cases, that's O of t times n, which since t is less than 10 should easily pass. Um, and in terms of memory, we're just using O of n memory since we just create strings. Um, of size uh, n. So I guess, yeah, O of n memory. <laughs>